Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Every Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to solve the question on lead code regarding suspicious bank accounts and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is medium and this question has been asked in JP Morgan interviews over the past couple of years. Okay, some of you also ask regarding SQL schema, so this is how it looks like. I will copy paste this in the description box below if you guys want to check it out. Okay, let's jump right in. We are given a table called accounts with two different columns, account ID and maximum income, account ID being the primary key for this table and each row contains information about the maximum monthly income for one bank account. We are also given a second table called transactions with five different columns, transaction ID, account ID, type, amount and day. Transaction ID is the primary key for this table. Each row contains information about one transaction. Type is enum so it can be either creditor or deb debtor where creditor means user deposited money into their account and debtor means user withdraw money from their account amount is the amount of money deposited or withdrawn during the transaction a bank account is suspicious if the total income exceeds the maximum income for this account for two or more consecutive months okay the total income of an account in some month is the sum of all its deposits in that month, right? So total income is not, you know, what you are, you have deposited minus what you have, you know, withdrawn. It is just the total sum of deposits in that month, right? We are asked to write a SQL query to report the IDs of all suspicious bank accounts. The result should be ordered by transaction ID in ascending order. However, this is a wrong statement in this question. Actually, it should be order by account ID in ascending order, right? We will see this, right? Okay, let's go through this example. So here you have two different accounts, right? Account ID three and four, and this is their maximum income they can have in a particular month, right? Let me drag it here. So now let's see. Okay, so the income in a, any given month is the sum of the creditor types, right? So for account ID three, right? Uh, june of 2021 one entries may of 2021 uh, june of 2021 and then july and june however if we look at the creditor part right so creditor types so this is a creditor this is a debtor and which is in may of 20 so we will ignore this right uh, this is creditor again uh, creditor and creditor so we have june of 2021 so for june of 2021 what is the amount of money deposited by account id3 this much right 107,100 plus 102,100, right? Plus 90,900. So obviously this is going to be more than 21,000, right? So this is for June of 2021. Now let's see for July of 2021, it is again 64,900, right? Which is again greater than 21,000. So in two or more consecutive months, right? So in two consecutive months, the account ID three has exceeded their maximum income limit, right? So three should be in the output. Now let's see for four, right? So for four, we have one creditor, two creditor, right? Three creditor, right? And remaining is debtor, right? So if we look at June of 2021, so this is 10,400, which is exactly equal to this one, right? If you look at May of 2021, it is 49,300, right? So this is more than what they can have. And then again in July of 2021, it is more than what they can have. So in May, they exceed in June, they are exactly equal. They do not exceed, right? And in July, they again exceed, right? So they exceed in two different months, but it is not consecutive. So that is why four should not be in the output. So if you look at it, the only account in the output is three, right? So this is what we need to do. So to do this question, what we need to do is firstly, we should keep all the rows where type is equal to creditor because that is what, how we are going to cal calculate the total uh, income, right? For each account ID. And then secondly, we need to, you know, group by the account ID and we should all only extract the year and month part from this column, right? And group by that and calculate the sum of the amount column, right? So this is going to give you that for every account in each month year, what is the total amount deposited, which is basically the income, right? So what I'm saying is from this table called transactions, right? So this table is called transactions. So from this table called transactions, right? Let's keep only those rows where type is equal to creditor, right? And then group by 
the amount id column and then we only need to extract a certain format of this column right so we can use the date format function so date format which column we need to extract the date from so day and what is the format so year month right so percentage y and percentage m so group by this and then what we need to do is let's return right so let's return the amount id and then the date format uh and then same thing right so day and in the format percentage capital y uh this should be okay so percentage capital y percentage small m uh let me alias this as year month right year month and then we need to calculate the sum of the amount right which is basically going to be as income right for that particular month uh let me run this let's see what we are getting okay so if you look at it right so we have for different account ids and year month what is the total income so if you look at it right so june of 2021 this is the income and uh, july of 2021 this is the income right similarly for account id 4 so may this is uh, the income june and july so once we have this then what we can do is we can try to get the maximum income for each of the account id so we can save this in a common table expression and do a left join so what I'm saying is, let's save this in a common table expression. So with CTE as, and then this entire thing goes into parentheses, right? Once we have this, then what I'm saying is, from this common table expression, right? From this common table expression aliased as C, let me left join the accounts table, right? So let me left join the accounts table aliased as A, on c dot account id is equal to a dot account id right and so once you are going to join you are basically going to have that okay so this is the account id right uh, from common table expression this is the year year month and this is the total income and then you are also going to have the maximum income but we are only concerned with those rows where your income is more than the maximum income right so we can after performing the join we can write okay and keep only those rows where c dot income is greater than a dot max income right a dot max income and then what we should do is let's return everything let me see what we are getting right so now if you look at it right so you have uh let me drag it here Okay, so now you have basically different account IDs and only those rows where your income is exceeding the maximum income, right? So once we have this, what we can do is we can even have another column here, which is going to basically have the next month, right? So after this, right? So June of 2021, what is the next month? Jul July of 2021, right? So we can make sure that, okay, we right now have made sure that we are only dealing with those rows where your income of that particular month is greater than the maximum income allowed. Now we also need to make sure that in two consecutive months, at least that income was more than the maximum income. So if we make another column, right, let's say it next month and have that, okay, this is the next month and then calculate a difference, right? So if that difference comes out to be one, right? So that means that in two consecutive months the income was more than the maximum income why because here if you look at it right so for this one that uh, column is going to have the value what 2021 07 right and for this one it is going to have null right? this row anyway will be neglected and here if you calculate the difference it is going to be one so three should be in the output right for this if you look at it right so if you you know find the next one so it is going to return 2021 07 in this case right and if you calculate the difference it is going to be two not one so this means that you need to ignore all these because they are not consecutive they have exceeded the maximum income in two different months but they are not consecutive so what i'm saying is we can you know make another column using the lead function of the year month column right and since this is a window function we write over clause and write partition by account id right and this account id is basically from the common table expression so partition by c dot account id year month is also from uh 
common table expression so c dot year month and then order by right order by c dot year month right in ascending order and let's alias this as next month right so we have that so we can store this in another common table expression let's say cte2 right so cte2 has and then again this entire thing goes into parentheses right okay so now what we can do is from this common table expression 2 we are only going to keep those rows where the difference between next month right so difference between next month and the year month is equal to 1 because that is what will make it consecutive right so once you have that then what you need to do is return distinct account ids right so distinct account id why i am writing distinct in this case in three consecutive months right if you have uh, exceeded the maximum income so you are going to return basically account id twice in that case right which is not what we want so that is why we need to write return distinct account id and as i already mentioned if you think about it right there is it does not make any sense to order this by transaction id right so uh, only logical explanation is order this by account id in ascending order so we can write order by right order by account id okay so this looks good let me go ahead and run this to see what happens okay so this says uh, runtime error duplicate column name account id do you know why this is happening so actually here if you look at it right so we kept all the columns right select star which is basically you are keeping account id column from common table expression because common table expression has account id and then if you look at accounts table it also has account id right and when we are doing select star so it is keeping the same column both these tables with same name right so that is why it is throwing you an error so to you know make sure that it does not do that so let's you know only keep c dot star so basically keep all the three columns from this common table expression and from accounts table you don't need even the I account id you just need the maximum income or right so what we can do is c dot star and then a comma a dot max income right now if i run this let's see what happens okay so now this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases so yeah this passes all the test cases and this is how we do it again not a very difficult question all we had to do was you know firstly find out you know the total income for each of the account ids and each year month right and once we had that then what we did was we made sure that okay which of these months the income exceeded the maximum income and we also made sure that whether those values exceeded the maximum income in two or more consecutive months or not so once we had that we just return the distinct account id so yeah, this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way you can think of to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and until then i will see you guys in the next video